Praise the Lord. And uh, with a name like Robinson Crusoe, this boy right here is going to Haiti. And uh, I think that um, James Bond will be with us tomorrow night. <clears throat> and Cary Grant's coming in on Friday. Praise God. Huh? Well, you ain't got to come on Friday. You're already here. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's a Pastor Shifflett and I were in several conferences together when we were both, he was going to South Africa, I was going to Bulgaria, and he would get up and sing and play. But we both got our support about the same time. Uh, I'm telling you. But it is good to be with you. I thank you so much for all the accommodations and everything, and I've got so much junk food in my room I, I'll have to have my truck to get me home, <clears throat> but I, I thank you so much for the room and everything. Everything is perfect, and uh, we're so happy to be here, and I kind of feel out of place. Um, I'm from St. Stephen's, as your pastor told you. We have one stoplight, and we never have a traffic jam. <laughs> Baltimore is a little different. Yeah. Washington, D.C. is different yeah. than St. Stephen, but it is good to be here. And I thank the Lord for the opportunity, and it's good to meet everybody and talk to folks. And I'm interested in, in uh, Robinson Crusoe. I really am. Praise the Lord. And uh, Caruso, right? Great. Great. Well, it is good to be here. I'd like you to turn to your Bibles tonight to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse number 15. I just want to read one verse. You heard about the uh, little girl that was confused about where she came from. She went to her mother. She said, where did I come from? And she said, well, God made Adam and Eve, put them in the Garden of Eden. We all descended from Adam and Eve. The next day, that didn't satisfy her, so she went to her father. And her father said, well, we came from amoeba, and the amoeba crawled up on the ground, became a monkey, and we descended from the monkey. And that took billions and billions and billions of years. So she was confused. She goes back to her mama the next day, and she says, Mama, you, you tell me that God created us, and Daddy tells me we, we evolved. And she said, well, he's telling his side of the family, and I'm telling my side of the family. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 16, we'll begin reading in verse number 15. And the Bible said here, go ye, or he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let's pray. To Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight and ask you, please, I pray that you'd help us. The Lord God, I pray as we look into the scripture and the Lord God, that you'd help and direct our hearts this week. The Lord God, I pray towards missions Dear Lord, to be more dedicated. Dear Lord, this church already supports missionaries. But dear Lord God, that our heart would be in it. And dear Lord God, I pray that you'd work in our hearts. I pray this week. Do a work, dear Lord God, that only God can do. And dear Lord God, we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to switch. See, how can I do better with missionaries? Well, number one, you can cry. You can cry unto God and say, God, please burden my heart for missionaries. Would you do a work in my heart? You could cry. You could contact them. You know what stirred my heart about missions? More than anything else, I begin to contact missionaries. I got their email addresses. I begin to write them. That was way back many years ago when email was just starting. And I would email them, and they would email me back. 
They wouldn't want, I don't know of any missionary, if you sent them an email, that they wouldn't answer you back. Cry. Contact them. Give. Cash. You know, if you can't go, you could help somebody that does, is called to go. Three areas this week, I'd like to see God work in your heart to be able to do something to help a missionary. How? I can cry. I can, I can ask God, would you please work in my prayer life for the missionary? We support many. Pick out five. Pick out ten and pray for them every single day. And then contact them. Talk to them through email. Call them on the phone. They got most every missionary that I know of has a phone unless they're in the Amazon. They'd be happy to get a call from you. Would you be happy to get a phone call from America? Even from Baltimore. <laughs> Praise God. And then give. Why? These men have been called to go to a field. They're going to face difficulty and trouble. They're going to face things that you'll never have to face. You'll, you'll get up in the morning, go to your job, come home, be in the same house that you've probably been in the last 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Same route to work, same route home. Get home, your wife's got supper on the table. They're going to face things that aren't like that. They're going to a field that they've never been to, learn a language that they've never, never understood before, and they're going to get off the plane and not understand the thing they heard. He said, how do you know that? Because that was me. I got off the plane and my wife said after a few days, we're, we're out of milk. Really? I don't even know how to ask for it. So I went down eight floors, walked into the little magazine there, and looked at the lady and she looked at me and I said, maybe I can point at it. Well, it wasn't anywhere to be pointing at. So I looked at her and she looked at me and I went, She gave me milk. It worked. <laughs> Praise God. But they face things that you'll never have to face. They'll have to do things and eat things that you'll never have to do or eat. Yeah. I've eaten some awful things being a missionary. But I didn't complain about it. And guess what? I didn't refuse it. I ate it. Why? Went in missionary mode. Pray for them. Contact them. And if you're able this week to give more, to help them get to the place that God has called them, give more. Whatever it takes to be able to get the gospel out. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. The Bible said here in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, the Bible said, He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Adonai and Judson said this, the prospect are bright as the promises of God. William Carey said this, expect great things for God, attempt great things for God. Jim Elliott said, he is no fool, I love this, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Hudson Taylor the great missionary Hudson Taylor said this, God uses men who are weak and feeble enough to lean on him. I may say this again this week. I'm a missionary. That doesn't make me superior. But it doesn't make me second class either. I'm happy to be a missionary. I'm proud to be a missionary. I've given my life to go to the foreign field and be able to preach the gospel to people that have never heard it. I walked through villages in Bulgaria and gave out gospel tracts and talked to people that had never heard the gospel one time in their entire life. I had that opportunity. What a blessing. C.T. Studd. What does C.T. Studd say? If Jesus Christ be the God and died for me, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him. How about Oswald J. Smith? He said, we talk of the second coming when half the world has never heard of the first. Missions, what is missions about? Missions is about trying to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Whether it's across the street or across the sea, it doesn't matter. Missions is missions. Why is it so important? I think of this. Almost every major character in the Bible is a missionary in some sort. Let me give you a few. Abraham went down to Egypt. Now, Abraham messed up. He wasn't a good missionary. He got down there and said his wife was his sister and all that mess. He, he wasn't a good missionary. Why? He wasn't a testimony to the grace and mercy and love of God. But he was a missionary. God did send him there. A lot. Another bad missionary. Probably wouldn't have got my funds. But Lot went down to Sodom, and what was his responsibility to do? To tell others of Jesus Christ, and that God was going to come and wash away everybody's sin by his blood. But guess what he failed? Abraham, Lot, Jacob, the great deceiver, was a missionary. He went down into Egypt. He got to stand, Jacob got to stand before the Pharaoh. What an opportunity. Joseph, what a missionary. Everybody in Egypt knew Joseph. Everyone knew the God of Jacob and Joseph. Why? Because of Joseph. Every major character in the Bible, Jesus was a missionary left his place and came to the earth. Peter, Paul, John, every major character, almost every major character in the Bible was a missionary in some sort. Almost every major continent has been affected by a missionary. Every major continent in this world has been affected by a missionary. David Brainerd, America, West. David Livingston, David Moffat, Africa. Your pastor, Africa. C.T. Studd had it made. C.T. Studd had it made. But he decided to lose it all to go to the mission field. And affected China, India, and Africa. Hudson Taylor, China. Adonine Judson, Burma. Amy Carmichael, India. Every major continent of this world has been affected by a man called a missionary. So almost every major character of the Bible has been a missionary in some form. Almost every major continent has been affected by a missionary in some sort. But almost every major Christian in my life has affected me because they were a missionary. I just want to name a few. Most of these you probably won't even know. But as a young Christian trying to write missionaries and talk to missionaries and call missionaries and try and get involved in the giving to missionaries, these men affected my life as a person, as a Christian, but also affected me that I ended up on the mission field. Bob Garrett. One of the greatest missionaries I've ever met in my entire life was Bob Garrett went to Columbia, South America. He just recently passed away. A great missionary. He affected my life in what he had to say. Austin Gardner. Austin Gardner, one of the greatest missionaries I've ever met in my life, went to Peru and did what most missionaries wanted to do. What did he do, Brother Jeff? He went down there, he went, won people to God. He started schools to train men and sent men all over Peru. The men that he influenced in Peru now gather, and there'll be 300 to 500 pastors there every year to be able to hear what to do to go out back out into Peru and win people to God. Bob Garrett, Austin Gardner, Curtis Gibson, France, Dean Hamby in Africa, Bob Ford for the printing of the scriptures. That man has raised more money for the gospel printing ministry than I've ever seen anybody in my life. When he comes to our church, we have to go to the bank and take out a loan. <laughs> Bob Ford, one of the greatest men that walked in Shulalong. Two people helped 
Two people helped me. One of those men helped your pastor get to Africa. Bob Ford was one that helped me, and Brother Stennett Blue helped us both. Almost every major Christian in my life has affected me for missions. How about Lance Neal, Papua New Guinea? He's out of our church. Brother Lance went to Papua New Guinea, was there seven years. You know how many people's on, in church in Papua New Guinea to, on Sunday? You know how many people will be in church because Brother Lance Neal went to Papua New Guinea? 3,500. Churches spread everywhere. Because of one man surrendering to go. It took, it took Brother Lance Neal five years to get his support. Now, this is a long time ago. He struggled to get there. But guess what? When he got there, he set the place on fire. These people affected my life. Brother Danny Moore, Robbie Smith, Freed Ware. All men that affected my life and missions to be able to turn my heart towards missions. I just want to give you some simple thoughts. Simple thoughts about missions tonight. And I'll be done. Missions. What is missions? Well, number one, it is elementary. You know what it means if a preacher looks at his watch? Nothing. <laughs> missions. What is missions? We say, well, a missionary gets on a plane, goes to a foreign field, learns the language, and starts churches. That's what a missionary is. But I thought about things that missions are. What is missions? Number one, it is elementary. It is elementary. Why? The simplicity of the gospel story. Jesus said this in Luke chapter 18, verse number 17. He said, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive my, the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. He also said in Mark chapter 10, verse 15, he said this, Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall not enter therein. What is, what is a man going to do when he gets to South Africa or Bulgaria or Haiti? What is he going to do? He's going to bring the gospel down as simple, in as simple a form as he possibly can do to be able to help people understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Young people say, well, you know, I, I'm not really eloquent. Moses said that. I'm not real eloquent. I, I really can't put a good outline together. No, the gospel is simple. Yes. It is as simple as A, B, C. So simple a five-year-old child can understand it and be saved by the grace of God. Amen. I think about it's elementary. Why? In the simplicity of the gospel story. It's my story of the gospel. Let me ask you this. How did you get saved? I mean, did somebody come with some great doctrinal understanding and come and tell you all the things about the Bible? No, they put it down as simple as they could, and they also told you their story. How they got saved, how they accepted Christ. It is elementary. You know, I got saved. I was a long-haired hippie boy, a drunk and a drug head. You can't believe that. That's the truth. I wasn't worth a bullet to shoot me with. I really wasn't. And a man came to the docks. I worked on a shrimp boat. And he came to the dock. And he invited me in his home. And he would read the Bible to me. And he told me about his story. And he told me about that story. And I got saved by God's grace. I think about this. Missions, it's elementary. You know, when you get on the mission field and you begin to learn a language, you've got a, all the cliches that you have in your language. And if you think about them, if you ever learned a language and got on the field, all those things you have to get rid of, they don't work. But you have to bring it down as simple as you possibly can. I, I think about this, missions is elementary. Why? In the simplicity of the gospel, Jesus came, he died on a cross, and he rose again, and he's coming again. That is the gospel story. And if you'll trust him as your Savior and repent of your sins, Jesus Christ can save you. Amen. Elementary. It's elementary. I think about not only is the gospel story elementary, but it is exclusive. Why? 
the seriousness of the story. John chapter 14, verse number six said this, Jesus said unto, them, said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Not only is missions elementary, but it is exclusive. Why? Because Christ is the only way. You, you go to a field, that may be Haiti. Voodoo. They believe in voodoo. Went to Bulgaria, they believed in orthodoxy. And trying to get that out, you can't get it out. Guess what? You present the gospel. Right. You present Christ crucified, buried, and rose again. I worked with Muslims while I was in Bulgaria. Iranian refugees. Did you talk about Islam? Nope, I talked about Jesus Christ and how he could deliver them from where they were and what they was. They were a sinner that needed to be saved by grace of God. I think about that missions is elementary, but number two, it's exclusive. And the seriousness of the story, Jesus is the only way. The straightness of the story, Acts chapter four, verse number 12 said, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given unto men whereby ye must be saved. It's not about Muhammad. It's not about Buddhism. I tell you, it's about Jesus Christ and what he did for us to set us free. It's elementary, but it's exclusive. There's nobody like Jesus. All are still in the grave, but Jesus is not. If you can fly to Jerusalem this morning or this evening, you fly to Jerusalem, guess what? You can go to that tomb, it's empty. Why? Because he had power over death, hell, and the grave. It's exclusive in its seriousness of the story and the straightness of the story and the separation of the story. If Christ is the only way, then this means that everyone else is wrong. If Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is the only way, then everybody else is wrong. That's pretty hard for people to take. When I got to Bulgaria, they would say this. They would say, well, it's all, you know, because they had, of course, Muslims there. They had orthodoxy there. They say, well, everybody kind of, you know, believes in the all in one God. I said, yeah, they all believe in one God, but not the true God. The separation of the story. If Christ is the only way, then everyone else is wrong. In America society, we learn to blend with others. But guess what? This message doesn't blend. The message of the gospel, whether it's in Haiti or whether it's in Germany or wherever it may be, guess what? It does not blend. There is one way to heaven, and that is Jesus Christ, the only way. I think about the seriousness of the story. It's exclusive. Why? He is the only way. The seriousness of the story, the straightness of the story, the separation of the story, the sadness of the story. What? Those that have not heard will never hear unless someone tells them. We're sitting in the luxury of this auditorium tonight. And guess what? There are people around the world that have never heard of Jesus Christ one time. What does that cost? I tell you what it costs. It costs that family there and that family there and this man here to be able to surrender all and go to wherever God's called them to go. That's what it costs. Somebody that's never one time, we hear it Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and guess what? There are people around the world that's not heard of once. It's exclusive. It's elementary, it's exclusive, it's eternal. The same gospel that Paul preached is the same message we preach. It's timeless, it's eternal. This message is eternal. The Bible says this and even at the end of time, the Bible said the books will be open. What book will it be, Brother Jeff? I think it'll be this book. This book right here will be in heaven. It's an eternal message. 
The message of redemption, it's a timeless message. Matthew 24, 14 said this, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. That hadn't taken place yet, but it will. <laughs> it will take place. Why? Because this gospel story is eternal. I wouldn't rate ask for a raise of hand who's the oldest in the building who's the oldest have been saved and then the youngest that's been saved and guess what the story they heard is the same story it's an eternal message what it's timeless it's a transforming message it transforms people from going to hell to going to heaven <laughs> It is a transforming message. So, so much different as the ministry in which I have and the Lord has given me to do to change men's lives from being sleeping under a bridge, shooting stuff in their arm, going crazy to accepting Jesus Christ and going back home to a wife and children and have their life put back together and go to a job every day and serve the Lord all the days of their life. It is a transforming message. And it still works today. Whether it's Africa or Bulgaria or Haiti, it doesn't matter. The message is a transforming message. Amen. It doesn't matter of the culture. It doesn't matter of the language. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a transforming message. It's a timeless message, a transforming message. It's a timely message. People are dying. And somebody has to go tell them. It's a timely message. Why? Because the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, he said this, now is the accepted time. They have to hear to believe. Those two go together. The Bible said faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The Bible also says this, how can they hear without a preacher? Somebody's got to go. God said this, he said this, he said, I want you to be in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Guess what? That's simultaneously. That's not at different times. I'm to take care of Baltimore. And that's all I have to worry about. No, you have to worry about the whole state of Maryland. You also have to worry about the entire country. And you also have to worry about Haiti. You also have to worry about Germany. You have to worry about Uganda. All at the same time. How do you do that? You do it with a missionary who comes through and says, God's called me to go to Uruguay? Yes, to Uruguay. I think about the gospel message, what? It's elementary. It's not complex. It's as simple a form as it possibly can be to get on an airplane and fly to a foreign field, get off that plane and tell others about Jesus Christ in the simplest form possible. It's elementary, it's exclusive, it's eternal, it's exacting. It's exacting. In, in what, Brother Jeff? It is repentance. Whether it's in Baltimore or South Carolina or South Africa or Bulgaria or anywhere else, guess what? A man must repent to be saved by the grace of God. There is no other way. It's exacting. It's not feel good. It's not see some strange light. One of the ladies that was in my church in Bulgaria, she said, I asked her how she got saved, and she said, I, it was icy, and I slid under a bus, and the bus just stopped in time and didn't run over me. I said, well, that's good. When did you get saved? She really believed that was it. Guess what? There are multitudes of people who believe that. It's exacting what? It is repentance and believing in Jesus Christ. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, he said, then Jesus, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Repentance. It's exacting. 
In what? In repentance. In redirection. Salvation is this. I'm going in this direction. God convicts me. I surrender my heart and I go in this direction. It is redirecting. The gospel of Christ, whether it is whether it is on the foreign field or Baltimore, Maryland, it does not matter. The gospel of Christ redirects our life and sends us in a new direction. It's exacting in repentance and redirection. In, in a resolve, what? A faith that demands nothing of us is neither biblical nor saving faith. Faith in Christ changes us. It gives us hope that we never had. It gives us joy that we never had. But it changes our direction. It's exacting. Not only is it repentance, redirecting resolve, but it's a reward. It is a reward for me to see a man, Robbie, just graduated, I don't know, a month ago, called me up a couple days after he left and said, guess what we did this morning? I said, what'd you do, Robbie? I said, you got my wife up. We opened up our Bible, and we read Proverbs chapter 7 together. He's got a little 5-year-old boy and 11-year-old girl. He calls me almost every day or texts. I'm doing good. I'm on the job. He said, you know, I never noticed the cussing on my job before I got saved as I do now. What did that? Salvation. It's rewarding. Going to a mission field, guess what, is rewarding. You say, man, I'm telling you, I don't know that I could ever do it. I'm telling you, the rewards in my heart from being a missionary on a foreign field, I wouldn't take a million dollars for all the experience. It's exacting. It's enlightening. The gospel of Jesus Christ and mission work is what? It's enlightening. Revelation, the revelation of the scripture, 1 Corinthians 2.14, he said, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. To see somebody that's ne never been saved by God's grace, never heard the gospel, take a Bible and begin to read it and say, Man, I understand that. I've never seen that. I've never had a Bible before. We were in Bulgaria. We were able to have a, a campaign. 35 people came from the United States. We handed out, I can't even remember the numbers, 110,000 John and Romans. We handed out 110,000 John and Romans in four days on the streets of Sofia, Bulgaria. You would, give them, you would give them a John and Romans with a little brochure in the back that was a, for a meeting at the end. And we invited them into a big hall. There were 700 people inside and 300 on the outside to hear the gospel. You would give them a John and Romans and they would sit down automatically on a bench and open it up and begin to read. Unbelievable. Do that in America. Do that in Baltimore. There is nothing that can take away that. I think of this, it's enlightening. What? In the revelation of the scripture, their eyes will be opened. I think about the responsibility of the saint. If the Bible tells us how we are to live out our lives as a witness, I think about the word of God. The enlightenment of the missions is this. You win people to God, and guess what their responsibility is to do? Win other people to God. It's a chain reaction. Guess what? Don Lyons led me to the Lord. People that I've met down through the years, 35 years, guess what? I've witnessed to him and him, and he's got saved, he's got saved, he's got saved. They have went and win other people to God. Again and again and again and again. Missions, it's exacting, it's enlightening, it's effective. It still works. 
It still works to the fact that a man and his wife and his children get on an airplane and fly to a foreign field or even here in the United States and be able to start a ministry and win people to God. It still works in 2020. It's effective. Why? It's a total transformation. The Bible said again, I, I just have the Bible to go on. I don't have anything else to go on. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's a tr total transformation. It's effective in our day. What will change our country? I say this because of my ministry. Jobs. There's jobs everywhere. I don't know how it is in Baltimore, but I tell you, you ride through Charleston, everywhere you look, now hiring, now hiring, now hiring, now hiring, now hiring, now hiring. The men that I work with, guess what? They can't even work those jobs. They're stoned out of their minds. They couldn't hold a job if they wanted to. My question is this, who's going to work those jobs? The people you witness to. That's who's going to work those jobs. The people you win to God. Here in your Jerusalem. They'll work those jobs. Why? Because you're going to lead them to the Lord and they'll be saved by God's grace and their life will be changed. And guess what? Maybe they'll come to this church. Maybe they'll fill up that pew right there. There's nobody sitting on. Or that pew or that pew. What is missions? Well, missions is elementary. Missions is exclusive. Missions is eternal. It's exacting. It's enlightening. It's effective. It works. It works in 2020. It stood the test of time. It's an evident testimony. I'm an evident testimony. This brother right here is an evident testimony that it works. Why? Because a missionary went to Haiti and won him to God. It works. 35 years ago, somebody comes to the dock. Would you come to a Bible study in our home? What I got to lose? Sure, I'll come. My life has been transformed. But I say this, not only has my life been transformed, my wife's life is transformed. Because one man went to a dock and told me about the gospel of Jesus Christ, my, life, my wife's life is different. I have three children. All their lives are different because one man came to a dock and told me about Jesus Christ. My children married children. Well, I guess. When you're 56, 55 years old, they're children. But they went, they won mates, or married mates. Their mates are saved by the grace of God. Guess what? I got six grandchildren that are affected because their granddaddy was met by a man named Don Lyons that told me the gospel of Jesus Christ, and my life was transformed because of that. It's affected my wife, my children, my grandchildren. Because... One man was obedient to go. Yeah. You know what missions is? Going. Yes. It's going into the streets, highways, hedges, and telling others about Jesus Christ. What is missions? It's effective. It works. It really works. It's, ex it's extended. It's far-reaching. Again and again and again and again. It works. Read the prayer letters. How many missionaries y'all got? 88? Read their prayer letters. Guess what? This one got saved. China. Taiwan. Japan. Bulgaria. Romania. France. Germany. All around the world. It's far-reaching. Where does it end when Jesus Christ comes again? Yes, sir. It's far-reaching. It's extended. What? It's far-reaching. It's faith-wrenching. The, the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ is, is faith-wrenching. Why? If God, if God required me by faith to go to the mission field, do you not think that if you get to stay, he would not require something of you? I said, Brother Jeff, that's pretty tough. It was pretty tough for me to hug my mom and daddy, hug my mother and father-in-law, walk down that long aisle, get on an airplane, 
and look out the window and see them and say, I'll see you in four years. When God required that of me, surely he requires something of a church to be able to reach as many people as we can by giving or going. It's faith-wrenching. Missions, what is far-reaching, it's faith-wrenching, but it has fantastic rewards. <laughs> the Bible said in Revelation 22, verse 12, the Bible said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. The Bible says this, Their works did follow them. What are you doing for world missions? You say, I give. I want you to pray this week for three things. I want you to pray, God, would you get a hold of my heart to pray for the missionaries we support. I want to get their name and what's going on in their world and I promise to pray for them. Number two, I want you to contact them. A phone call, an email, or we could go back 100 years and hand write them a letter, or a note. Pray for them, contact them, and give. Would you pray about what you give this week? You say, I'm already giving, so am I. I would be a low-down hypocrite to stand before you this week and preach to you about missions if I didn't give. Guess what this month is? Mission month at Life Baptist Church where I'm a member. I was just in a mission conference in Knoxville, Tennessee. And that mission conference stirred my heart that I'm not doing enough. Are you? God's called me to go, and I went. I spent eight years and a month on the foreign field, started two churches there, and came home. Now I run a men's home. I've been beat up. I deal with men that you don't even want to deal with, and most men don't, but I deal with them every single day. God's required that of me. What's God requiring you to do? This week, pray, get some addresses, and ask God, what can I do more for world missions? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, ask you please, I pray, would you please work this week, I pray, in our hearts, in our lives. God, I pray.